Hi everyone. I'm here to show you how my holiday planner is working out. So go ahead and grab a cup of coffee and maybe a cookie or two and join me as we take a look at my holiday planner for 2021. Hi everyone, I'm Crystal from A Crystal Clear Life, where we focus on planning, organizing, and living a more simplified life. Well, as you can tell by the Christmas tree behind me, uh, December is here, and in our family we are getting ready to celebrate the holiday of Christmas. And with that in mind, I went ahead and set up a December and holiday planner combined into one. Now the holiday planner that I'm using is from DCP Digitals and I will link them in the description box below. Uh, this holiday planner is one of many of the planners that they have available. This one also incorporates uh, the monthly and weekly plans for actually October, November, December, and January. This month I am using the holiday planner and the weekly and monthly planner all wrapped up into one because I wanted to just try it out the way it was packaged and see how it went. In my last video where I showed you the holiday planner, we went ahead and downloaded the planner as a PDF and we brought it into OneNote. And I will link that video up above so that you can check that out if you're interested in that whole download setup process. Once it was downloaded into OneNote, we were able to copy and paste the various pages that we would need so that we could really customize the holiday planner and make it exactly what we needed. So what you're going to see today is just that. I have gone through to pick and choose the pages that I wanted to use for 2021 and I went ahead and started filling some of those in. Now some of this I did on vacation. Some of it, I was using my iPad and my Apple Pencil and actually writing in the car while we were driving. So some of my writing is a little jiggly, but I'll show you how to fix that today too. So uh, let's jump into it and see what's going on with the holiday planner. Okay, you can see here in the holiday planner, the first page that I pulled out to use for myself was the four month overview. And what I did is I sat down and thought about um, what I normally do for Christmas. And I broke it down into four months, October, November, December, and January. And this is the way the planner was designed. This is not something that, that I did. I was just glad that Jennifer kind of has the same thought process that I do. So I went ahead and started breaking down the items that I would normally take care of in October, November, December, and January. And you can see here, the list for November is actually quite long because you're not only preparing for long-term things for Christmas, but you also have the holiday of Thanksgiving to deal with. So what I ended up doing to this page, the only modification that I really made was I stretched it just a bit. I made it longer so that it would uh, incorporate my entire list. And that's the beautiful thing about digital planning. You can modify these things. I've never been able to take a paper planner and make the paper longer than it actually was. Unless you do a flip out, of course. Anyway, so you can see here that I have all of the items that I would normally do during the months of October, November, December, and January. That's pretty cool. Now I have this forever and ever, and I don't need to recreate it year after year. I simply can copy and paste these blocks, modify as needed, and take it into next year. The next thing that I did is I created a weekly checklist. And again, this is something that was set up in the holiday planner, the weekly checklist, six weeks out, five weeks out, four, three, etc. All I did here was I went in and added a text box with the dates that correspond to 2021. And then I started typing in my list of things to do. Now, 
sometimes um, I was in the process of doing something. So I would go ahead and highlight it to show that I was working on it. And the check mark shows that it is complete. In gift shopping, I have started gift shopping. There's a little dot there that shows I've started, but I have not finished yet. So that's something that I still need to work on. Down here in week three, you'll see that some of the things that I had typed in earlier, I have gone back and changed them to be a strike through just to draw a single line through them because my husband and I have decided that we are not going to be buying a live tree this year. My daughter put this tree up while she was here last week and that's perfectly good enough for my husband and I. So we're not going to go through the whole long process of buying and putting up a live tree this year. So I've simply left it on my list and just drew a line through it. So I know that that's not happening this year. Then I went into my normal November setup, which I am going to skip in this video, this section here with my dashboard and my weeks and all of that kind of thing. I'm going to create a separate video about how I'm using uh, this holiday checklist or this holiday notebook as my uh, December uh, monthly notebook as well. So I'm going to skip a few of those pages. Next in the holiday notebook, I have holiday events. And the one event that we have done so far is we went to the Winterfest of Lights, which is a lovely walkthrough uh, festival of lights. We actually went on a really nicely mild day and was able to spend a while walking around enjoying the lights. So what I need to do here is add a couple of photos and um, finish out this page that I think that will look really nice. The other nice thing about uh, having this in digital form is if it's a slow year and I only have this two page spread of events, that's fine. But if it's a busy year like we've had in the past and I've had Girl Scout activities and choir activities and church activities and all of those kinds of things, I actually could create a separate page for all of those different events. But this year, it looks like with COVID still going on, it's going to be a relatively light year for my husband and I. So this two page spread may be enough. But if I need another one, all I have to do is copy and paste. Moving on to projects. This is one of those that I was working on in the car. So you see that my handwriting is a little jiggly <laughs> and I apologize for that, but that's okay. I understand what it was all about. One of the things that I uh, got inspiration to do while we were on vacation was to create this book page wreath. Let me zoom in so you can see that a little bit better. There you go. So for this book page wreath, um, all I'm going to need is uh, a piece of cardboard with some circles drawn on there, hopefully centered better than my little sketch here. And I need about 150 uh, book pages, about seven by nine, a stapler, some glue and a hot glue gun. And then I have my directions down here for doing that. And this cute little diagram shows me where to start and what to do. And there you go. So if I decide to make this book, uh, page wreath. I have those directions there ready for me. And there's also a space here that I can add a finished uh, project picture if I'd like. My holiday bucket list this year. I don't know that I'll have enough things to fill in this whole bingo board. I will probably put pictures here uh, to uh, show the items that we do, but I have a few things started on my bucket list. I want to bake some cookies. We already went to Winterfest. That was good. I want to decorate the house. We've done a large part of that. Um, and I want to make sure that I watch the Muppets Christmas Carol. That's one of my favorites. Speaking of movies, we have watched a few Christmas movies already this year. Um, and so what I've decided to do this year is record those movies and the books that I've read, the holiday books that I've read on this page. What I'm going to do is put down the date when we watch the movie or when we've read the book and of course, give it a star rating. Kind of a neat way to remember some of the things that you've watched and that you've read during the holiday season. I see that Harry is joining us. Looks like he's settling down. 
for Advent this year, um, I have my Thanksgiving reading plan listed here and my Christmas reading plan listed here. And I also bought an Advent calendar from Aldi's that's filled with cheese. <laughs> we love cheese in our house and I thought that would be a cute and fun thing to do. Now, it's already December the 3rd and we haven't opened it yet, but I will catch up this weekend. Don't worry about that. So I'd like to record what kind of cheese it is and what we thought about the cheese. So that will be fun. For my gift list here, um, what I did is I used the pages uh, that Jennifer had created in the holiday planner here. She has this Christmas gift list page where you can uh, have a place to put the person's name and some ideas that you're thinking about for them. She also has this version for smaller amounts of gifts for maybe neighbors and, um, you know, church friends, school friends, teachers, that kind of thing. Uh, but the other thing that I wanted to show you is on this side, let me zoom in just a little bit. On this side, what I did is I took the chart that I had created last year and I simply dropped it in to the blank side of the stocking stuffer page. So if I click on it, you can see here that it's in its own little container. So here's my chart from last year and here's my title from last year. So in just setting things up, I was just pulling things together to see, you know, what would work and what wouldn't work. Now I am somebody that loves tables, so I don't know. Although on my old chart, I didn't really have a place for if I had purchased the, the items and what the amount was. So I do kind of like the fact that that is listed over here on this chart. So I may start using this chart once I start doing all of my gift shopping. For gift ideas, I simply have a blank page here. I haven't really come up with any ideas for last minute gift ideas. Um, as I've said in the past, our gift giving list is getting shorter and shorter. Um, so I'm less likely to have a stash of last minute gifts, but I put the page here just in case. This page is for consumable gift ideas. My family loves to do experiences as gifts. But with COVID happening, that's harder and harder to do over the last couple of years. So another thing that we like to do is consumable gifts um, or gifts of time. And so I've kind of created here a list of those items that might be nice gift ideas for people uh, based on whether they're family, friends, kids, that kind of thing. Again, it's really just reference for me in case I'm looking for gift ideas for someone. I have a book log page that I pulled from the holiday planner. Haven't done anything with that one yet. There's still plenty of time. On this gifts received page, um, what Jennifer has printed in the holiday planner is a column for date, the gift that you received, who it was from, and whether you sent a thank you note. Well, again, I really love my um, uh, tables that I can fill in. So all I did here on the side was I created a table that has four columns that actually can be typed in. So let's say, actually, I received a gift today. So I can go in here and type December 3rd and tab over and it was a jar of jelly and a fruit cake. And that was from my friend, Bob. And then I have a space here uh, to designate when I have mailed him a thank you note and with his gift uh, when I get around to doing that. So I could do that over here. I simply could come over here and I could start typing and you would see that it creates a um, text box and I could type in the same information and tab over that that was from Bob. And if I'm really particular and I want it on the line, I can move it down and move it down to get it just in the right spot, like so. And I could keep typing on it that way, or I could take my Apple Pencil and uh, handwrite it on there if I'd like. So I'm trying both ways to figure out which way I like best. Um, and we'll see. We'll make that determination at the end of this holiday season. 
for my holiday cards. Again, this is my chart from last year, and I simply brought it in here and started counting up so I would know how many cards I needed to order. Um, and this doesn't have addresses or anything like that. It simply is a list that I was creating uh, just so that I would know the number of cards that I needed to buy to mail out. I did pull in the recipe card, although I've not filled any of that in. So you are getting a sneak peek at how this holiday notebook is working. And I'll probably do a final wrap up after everything is all filled in. I'll do a quick flip through for you all to see. We are having a tailgate style cookie exchange at our church. Um, and so there so far are six of us that have signed up to do that and it will be trunk or treat style. So we can decorate our trunks and prepackage everybody's cookies into little goodie bags. And then we'll take turns going around car to car and picking up our cookies. So I need to get with the ladies and write down what each person is bringing. And I even added a column here so I could put in my own comments or ratings or see if I want to get that recipe. Anyway, I love this sticker from DCP Digitals. It says, a balanced diet is a cookie in each hand. <laughs> I think that's so cute. These next couple of pages have to do with decoration inventory. Um, we were so busy and hurried while my daughter was here that I did not have time to write down the decor inventory of things as we were pulling them out of the tubs. But I will be doing that as I put things away because uh, I can take my time and do that in January and not have to worry about getting things done so quickly. Most of the tubs that I store our Christmas decorations in are clear and I don't have that many problems figuring out what box things are in because I can pretty much see into the tub and know what is where. I also organize them by room. Like I have certain decorations, nativity sets, etc., that go in my living room, certain decorations that go in the family room, certain decorations that go in the kitchens, the bathrooms, that kind of thing. Um, so I'll be interested to try this decor inventory page as I put things away this year. The one page that I did fluff out for you guys um, is the Christmas tree page. Let me zoom in a little bit on that and let you see what I've written here. Um, again, this was something that I was planning and thinking and uh, while we were riding in the car. So I apologize again for my handwriting being kind of scratchy. But you'll see here that our theme on the tree this year is red and gold. And we have a little like five foot tree that we use when we travel. Um, if we're going to an Airbnb or something like that, and we just want to bring a little Christmas, it folds up, the tree folds up really small, so it's not hard to take at all. And we have very simple, non-breakable decorations that we put on it, so it just gives a little Christmas spirit uh, wherever we, we need it. Um, so anyway, we decided to change locations. We wanted to put it in the family room this year. And so my daughter picked this new location and we were able to put it up pretty quickly. And um, you see, I've taken a few pictures so that I can document where it's located and what the ornaments are. And of course, there's my boy, Harry, uh, laying in his new favorite spot on the end of the couch, which is where he's at right now. Um, guarding over the Christmas decorations. So adding the uh, pictures and things to the pages really helps bring them to life and really helps create those memories. Down here, rather than to get, what I did is I put any new things that we purchased this year. Um, I'm thinking that I might like an ornament inventory. Every year we buy a special ornament to represent what people are doing or what was happening this year. I should show you the picture of the ornament that we bought for my husband. He's been working from home now for two years. So my daughter bought this little uh, polar bear and the polar bear has a laptop in one hand and a mug of coffee in the other. And he's wearing his business attire on the top and he's wearing his jammies on the bottom and his slippers. It is so cute. Uh, I'll put a picture of it here. <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, you know, something like that just to represent uh, what's happening. And I would like to be able to document those. So if I can't find um, 
an ornament inventory page. I may have to create one myself to add to my holiday planner. But here's my Christmas tree plan for this particular year. And like I said, rather than putting things that I needed to get, I put new things that we bought this year. I also started sketching out our plans for Christmas Eve. Um, I am in charge of the online presence for our church. So if there is a Christmas Eve service, I will have to be running that um, and making sure that everybody's logged in and, and, and ready to go. Of course, we hang our stockings and we leave milk and cookies for Santa and reindeer treats too. Don't want to forget those. And we have a tradition in our family of getting new pajamas on Christmas Eve. So opening our Christmas PJs is part of that. With my daughter gone and COVID still in place, there are no big family gatherings this year and we will see what Christmas Eve brings. Also wanted to start a schedule for Christmas Day, but I wanted to show you something uh, that's kind of a cool feature that OneNote has. Um, so let me zoom in a little bit and I'll show you what I'm talking about. You'll see here on the Christmas day, this is something that on my iPad while we were in the car, I started filling in and I just wrote it with my Apple pencil. And the cool thing is now that I'm home and back on my desktop, if I want to, I don't have to, but if I want to, I can go up here to my draw menu and choose the lasso tool and I can circle all of that handwriting. And then there is an option when I right click to turn ink into text. And when I click on that, you see that it took my handwriting and it turned it into text, except for that last T. You know why? I didn't lasso very well. And just like that, it takes my handwriting and turns it into text. Now, it's not perfect every time, but it's very easy to fix. Um, so I think that's one of the cool features that OneNote has. I really like that. Then there are pages for holiday memories that I'll need to fill in, and there are blank pages. I chose to put four blank pages here that I can copy and use again. One is completely blank. One is lined like journaling or notebook paper. One has the cute snowflake uh, graphics across the top. And the other is in this uh, chalkboard style, which I think is kind of cool. And you'll see that I've used that one in my December uh, planning, weekly planning. Well, anyway, that's it. I've been using my holiday planner and enjoying it. I probably am more organized this year than I have been in a long, long time. And the cool thing is, is that because it's digital, I will be able to take the information that's in this holiday planner for 2021 and reuse it in the years to come. I just think that's really, really cool and really awesome. Anyway, thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate all of you. Uh, spending your time with me and taking a peek into my holiday planner. If you've enjoyed this video or you've learned something new, go ahead and give me a thumbs up, please. I really appreciate that. Uh, it helps other people find our channel and the content that we're sharing. And if you haven't already, please think about subscribing. Subscribing is free. All you have to do is either click the red button underneath of this video or at the end of the video, just click on my little face that's in the circle. Subscribers also help YouTube send other people to our channel so that our community can continue to grow. It's been great talking with you again today, and until next time, okay, bye.